Hello guys, today we are going to discuss about liver trauma. I am Dr. Jorak and we are going to discuss about the etiology, pathology, clinical feature and diagnosis and the treatment of liver trauma. Liver is the second common solid organ to be injured. It is preceded only by the spleen. Liver injuries are commonly associated with affection of other intra-abdominal and extra-abdominal injuries. The ribs, pleura, lungs, colon and spleen are common associations. Talking about the etiology, it can be due to accidental trauma, it may be blunt or penetrating. The blunt trauma is due to road traffic accidents and the penetrating trauma is due to stabs or bullets. It can be due to iatrogenic reasons, percutaneous liver biopsy, and percutaneous transhepatic colon geography can be the cause. A spontaneous rupture is rare, but it may be associated with eclampsia and hepatic tumors. Here we have liver. Talking about the pathology, this is a small subcapsular hematoma. This one here is a small superficial tears. With increasing seriousness, this is large subcapsular hematoma and large superficial tear. This is here of a bile duct. And hepatic artery. The liver can undergo avulsion. There can be vascular injury to the hepatic artery or hepatic veins or the portal vein. The building can stop by itself or by treatment or building can lead to death. The hematoma or the tear can be connected with the bile duct thus resulting into hematobilia. Hematobilia can present as hematemesis or melena. Hematobilia is presence of blood in the bile duct. It is a it presents as dried sock, jaundice, and hematemesis or melena. This is the gross pathology of liver lacerations. Talking about clinical features and diagnosis. There is history of trauma which can draw our attention to the presence of liver trauma, abdominal pain, abdominal tenderness and rigidity which is caused by parietal peritoneum irritation, presence of low rib factors, intraperitoneal hemorrhage, which can be massive or minor. Massive intraperitoneal hemorrhage gives the picture of hemorrhagic shock, whereas minor intraperitoneal hemorrhage can be detected by diagnostic peritoneal lavage or DPL or ultrasound or CT scans. Penetrating injury sometimes are diagnosed by explorations. Here we have a scheme for the diagnosis of liver trauma. Uh, let's perform abdominal examination, vital signs and response to resuscitations. If abdominal examination shows abdominal tenderness and rigidity, it is positive signs for liver trauma. If the vital sign is, uh, is uh, if the vital signs aren't unstable, it means uh, the liver trauma is worst 
and we can check the response to resuscitation. If the response to resuscitation is good, we can define on conservative management. But if the response is not good, we, we should undergo laparotomy. Let's moving on. If the patient is hemody hemodynamically unstable, or the patient is hemodynamically stable, if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, we are gonna do first focus assessment of sonography and trauma. If it is positive, we are gonna perform laparotomy. If it is negative, we are gonna do DPL diagnostic pattern lavage, and if it is positive, we are gonna do uh, laparotomy. For hemodynamically stable patient, we can perform CT and if there is presence of active memories or not, we're gonna check it. If there is, it is present, we're gonna do therapeutic embolization or laparotomy. If it is negative, we're, we're gonna just observe and perform repeated CT scans. So the in, talking about the initial management of uh, liver trauma, priorities of multi-trauma management should be followed. And we gotta resusc resuscitate the patient and follow those priorities as airway, breathing, uh, circulation. We, we gotta uh, transfuse blood to the patients and perform lab tests. And peritoneal injury should undergo laparotomy most of the times. Talking about the principles of surgical management, a longitudinal excision is performed for giving adequate exposure. The longitudinal incision can be extended to the chest and thorough systemic exploration can be performed in order to check other associated injuries. Number one priority for surgical management is to arrest bleeding. It can be performed by packing. Number one is packing. Packing can be done by the with the pressure with the hand or by the use of retractors. It is useful for control of brisk liver hemorrhage. Here we have liver and stomach, and the adjoining. This is portal vein bile duct and hepatic artery above it this is laser omentum and on the free border of laser omentum lies the portal tract this is foramen of Winslow from where we can insert a finger and get hold of the portal vein and hepatic artery in order to occlude the bleeding we can use clamp or our finger. Uh, you, this is portal vein, hepatic artery, and bile duct. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta we, we gotta pack the liver in order to stop the bleeding. The second thing we gotta do is Pringles maneuver, where by the help of vascular clamp or by our fingers, we get hold of the hepatic artery and portal vein on the free border of lesser omentum and we get hold of it for 20 minutes so that bleeding is there is lessened rate of bleeding allowing the surgeon to visualize and ligate the bleeding vessels. Moving on. We should avoid suturing liver tears because it is likely to leave a space for accumulation of hematoma that may infect or communicate with the intrahepatic bile duct. What we could do is we could perform the transverse sutures, deep transverse matter sutures on either side using special needles. These are here deep transverse matter sutures in each side.
sutures should be avoided in liver trauma because it because it can cause hematoma abscess and other complications the another important thing what we can do is we can use copting sutures in case of liver trauma this is a body called omentum over here tying sutures over pedicle omentum helps hemostasis if there is hematoma we got to explore after exploring the hematoma we can ligate the damaged vessels and ducts and excise the dead tissues the hematoma is then left open for drainage inaccessible areas should be firmly packed and transferred to specialized centers where the pack is removed in the operating theater and the injury is dealt with this here is a balloon tamponade and it is used especially for penetrating trauma no sutures no sutures in cases of liver trauma until and unless however resorted if control of bleeding not possible so multiple intraperitoneal drains are always placed to guard against collections of blood and bile in case of liver trauma prophylactic antibiotics are prescribed thank you